Happy Wednesday. Does it feel like Wednesday? It's totally Wednesday. Hey, uh, we're going to get started, and we're going to, I'm going to project through these speakers, because I think we're going to, are we recording, Stan? We are now officially YouTube stars. Yeah, go us. We have a YouTube page now at, uh, I've just Google Grounded Student Ministry, and you'll find the YouTube stuff. Last week was our first thing that we recorded, and we're just kind of getting off the ground. Um, so go check that out if you ever miss, or you want to go back and, and hear some stuff. Tonight is a special night, and you may not know this. Is it a special night for anyone else? Wait, does that mean it's on Sunday? We'll, we'll wait. We're going to save the happy birthday song for Sunday. That'll be good. Anybody else have a birthday? What? Friday? Next Wednesday. All right. All right. Does anybody have a half birthday? Yours is on Friday? You guys ready? It's Courtney's birthday on Friday. How many? 14. You ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Uh, yes, hooray, hooray, and like little confetti pops and stuff, hooray, confetti emoji. All right, well tonight is special because we're going to talk about something that I've been wanting to talk to you about for a long time, and also kind of a rabbit trail. We're finally like getting progress on our stage and the trim and stuff. It's starting to look awesome in here, isn't it? Yeah. I'm excited to finally feel like we're coming together in here. Huh? Plants? Oh, only if you water them. Okay. Who will water them? They might die in here. All right. We'll get some plants. We'll, like, get some vines hanging down from the... <laughs> we'll get some plants. All right. Well, if you have your uh, handout, we're going to have... This is my attempt tonight. A brief Bible lesson... And then we'll talk about the details of how our new mentoring program is going to work. So you have a meme on, some of you have one, some of you have another. You might have to look at your neighbors because there's a couple. Uh, I'm trying to be hip and fun, and so you should be supportive of that. There's your meme for today. Mentoring is the topic. So we're going to talk about what does it look like to be mentored uh, specifically here at Oakland Heights. And so, as you know, uh, grounded student ministry, as we talked about last week from Colossians 1.23, that, that verse says that you be grounded and settled and not be moved away from the hope of the gospel. That is our desire, that is my desire every week as I study and pray and plan for this moment and even on Sundays, uh, is that we would do things that enable you to be equipped in your faith so that when you go to school and people come at you, when people fall away, when temptation comes, when you grow up and you move out and have your own life, that you have a foundation for your faith. Because if you don't, as we saw last week with Jesus in Luke 6, with the two different places that the men build on the earth and the rock, the one was wise and the one wasn't. And your, wife, your life can totally be washed away when all the difficulties come if you don't have a foundation. Of course, we know that foundation is Jesus. If you don't know him already, you don't have a foundation. But if you have a moment in time in your life when you would say, I've been born again, I know who Jesus is, I've been forgiven, I've been given the Holy Spirit, I I'm a new person, then you can build upon the foundation of your salvation and not be moved away. So to aid that, I believe mentoring is going to help you. We've tested out, we have a few prototype relationships to feel out how this thing's supposed to shake down. And honestly, listen, I used to do things that were not student ministry before this, so I did not come here with a whole bunch of experience in how to men mentor high school students. 
But I think after a couple years, I think August is two years that I've been in Georgia. We're starting to figure some things out, and we're going to roll it out. And so um, tonight first, we're going to go to the Bible. Uh, you've got a few notes. Your notes should be pretty simple. We're going to look at an example uh, biblically, and then we'll break down the details of our program with the time we have left. So you guys ready for that? <clears throat> you with me? If you're with me, um, say some funny catchphrase. Some funny catchphrase. All right, I've got one person that's with me. Anybody else? You guys here? All right. If you're with me on three, say yeehaw. You ready? One, two, three. Yeehaw! All right, perfect. All right, turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 16. Do you guys have one of these? Have you ever, have you ever seen these things before? No. It's a book. It, did you know it comes in book form? What is that? Acts chapter 16. <laughs> and, what's up, Darius? In your notes, you're going to see uh, your first point, we have three points because that's how we roll, is the mentoring process. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that's not it. What is it? Stan, give me point number one. Uh, here we go. My notes need updated. Mentoring is a process of two people spending time together for the goal of investing in the mentee. So I just introduced you to a few terms. Mentor and mentee. Or as I like to refer to it, the mentos. Because, you know, mentee just sounds weird. Like manatee, menatee, man mentee, mentos. It's kind of weird. But anyway, thank you, Stan, for clarifying what I was trying to say. The, what we're going to see is an example in the Bible, I believe is an excellent example of mentoring. And actually, it's a little step further than that. It's really discipleship. But what we're going to talk about in high school is what you need in your life, which is a mentor. And this is what mentoring is. It's two people that get together. And the purpose is that one invests in the other one. As a mentee, you need to realize you don't have it all figured out. <laughs> and you're going to go to somebody else and say, hey, man, let's talk. Why don't you hang with me? Why don't you keep me accountable? And so we're going to see that in Acts chapter 16. And before we get in, I just remembered we haven't prayed yet. So let's pray as we come to the word and we'll dive in. Father God, thank you for tonight and these students that are here with us and just how you speak to us and you want to work in our lives. Even for this message that you put on my heart for them, I pray, God, it'd be for them. It's your word. It's not mine. These really aren't my ideas. It's, it just comes out of your book. And so, God, I pray that you would speak to them and show them that it's good. I have mentors. I have people I look up to. They have people they need to look up to, the right people. And so, Lord, tonight I pray that you would teach us in your word, that it wouldn't just be academic but you, that you would move in the hearts of your people to get accountable and to seek out some mentors. I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. All right, Acts chapter 16. Let's read five verses. You ready? One through five. It says, Then came he to Derby and Lystra. All right, hold on. This is the Apostle Paul. Uh, if you're not familiar with the book of Acts, we're into chapter 16. It's through his ministry, I'm sorry, I had to give you a little context. The Apostle Paul, uh, this is after Jesus has uh, been resurrected and gone to heaven, and Paul has converted to be a believer in Jesus, and he's been doing this Christian ministry thing for a while, and he comes to this place that we see in verse 1 where it says, he came to Derby and Lystra, and he beheld a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess and believed, but his father was a Greek. Okay, so Paul's doing ministry. He happens upon this dude named Timothy. It tells you his lineage. He has a mom and a dad. And then verse 2, it says, of his character, it says, which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would, would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews, uh, which were in those quarters. For they knew, uh, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. Verse 4, 
And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. All right. <clears throat> Just let that settle. We're looking at a snapshot into the missionary journey of the Apostle Paul as he's literally going from place to place preaching the gospel. He gets to this place and he's introduced to a specific character, which if you know your New Testament, later on, this guy Timotheus, he's going to write two books of the Bible. They're really letters to Timothy. And we're now introduced to this relationship of Paul and Timothy. And this is going to be a picture for us of what it looks like for someone to mentor another person. Now, mentoring can be a secular term in um, uh, like skilled uh, trade, uh, like an electrician, you become a uh, what is it first, an apprentice, and then you go to a journeyman. This can apply in a lot of ways. But specifically, we're, we're in church tonight. Our desire is to invest in your spiritual life. And so that's what we're going to see that Paul and Timothy did together. I just want to look at a few points from Acts chapter 16, and we're going to move on, and we're going to talk about what their relationship looked like. So if you just stay right there and look at verse 2, it's going to tell you about the character of Timothy. What are we looking for in somebody that we want to mentor? And by the way, the only people in this room that are going to be the mentors are the adults. So you students will not be mentoring other students, FYI. Whenever you graduate, I would love to, to talk to you about that uh, and for that to happen. But what are we looking for when we're going to mentor somebody? It says in verse 2 that he was well reported of by the brethren. That's a pretty good place to start. Because in mentoring, you're going to spend a lot of time together. And if you want to flake out and you don't want to be faithful, or if you're not willing to grow and to change, mentoring's not going to work out for you very well. We would treat discipleship in big church the same way. When you grow out of high school, you can go get discipled. And that's fantastic. You should totally do that. If you never get discipled, you're, I'm telling you, you're missing out. But we start off that, that Timothy, the Mentos, had a good relationship with the other believers that were around him. It goes on in verse 3, and it says, Him would Paul have to go forth with him. What that means is that Paul, was, Paul wanted this relationship. It's good for you both to want your relationship. It continues in verse 3, and it says, And took and circumcised him because of the Jews. Now, we don't have time to get into what exactly this means, but you got, does anyone like not know what circumcision is? Okay. Let's just say it cost Timothy something to be mentored. Because Paul, remember, Paul's traveling from place to place, preaching the gospel, and he grabs young Timothy, and he's like, Hey, boy, come with me. Come on, we're going to do this thing together. But there's these, this religious crowd that we're going to try to minister to, and they're going to want this particular thing to be done to you. And so you need to get circumcised. Now, maybe we're not going to ask that of you <laughs> in mentoring. <laughs> Definitely not going to. Okay, no, I must clarify. No, maybe. We're not going to ask that of you in, in mentoring. But let's just say that it's going to cost you something. You feel me? If you're going to give yourself to being invested in by another person, it's probably going to be on a weekly or semi, uh, maybe other, every other weekly basis. You might not be able to do everything else in your life. It might cost you something. As we go on, it says in verse 4, and they went throughout the cities, or through the cities. They traveled together. Paul and Timothy's relationship wasn't only at the gathering in the synagogue. It wasn't only on Wednesday nights. Hey, we talk for a little bit before and after the service, so we're mentoring, right? No. It says they went through the cities. They literally walked from place to place together. And you can imagine before having a vehicle, it might take you some time to get from place to place. And you could imagine maybe the conversations that you could have just kind of doing life together as you're traveling from place to place. I think a good mentoring relationship shouldn't just be academic. 
But nevertheless, it continues in verse 4 and says, They delivered them the decrees for to keep, which were ordained to the apostles. What that means is that Paul was going around teaching what the other apostles had already said, Hey man, this is, this is Christian doctrine now. So Timothy was involved in ministry with Paul. It doesn't say here that he was preaching. Paul just said, hey man, come with me. Let's go. Let's go do this. And Paul was the one doing the teaching. But Timothy was present. And so if you want to be mentored, you need to be present. You need to be hanging. You need to be doing stuff together. And so whenever your mentor says, hey man, I'm serving at this 4th of July thing, or hey, there's this Halloween thing or this glowing Easter thing coming up, I want you to come with me. Your answer is yes, by the way. That's a good mentoring relationship. And it continues in verse 5 and says, So were the churches established in the faith. As a result of Paul grabbing Timothy and taking him on his journey to teach the word, he was a part of a successful ministry. This was good for, for Paul, for Timothy, and for the churches. And so your mentoring shouldn't just be about you. You should be a beneficiary, for sure, of spending time with somebody else that's going to invest in you. That's point one. But it's not just about you. But let's talk about this relationship. What's our next point, Stan? Hit me. Okay, yeah, there's that. Lessons learned from Paul and Timothy. Uh, We just did that. And then uh, hit me with point two. All right. The mentoring relationship is more intentional and valuable than others, meaning than other relationships. Did you know that not all relationships were created equal? For example, the relationship I have with my spouse is different than the one that I have with you. The relationship that Drew and I have is different than the one that I have with you, and et cetera. All right, we can say that, in a, but the, the relationship that James DeCoker and I have is different than the one that I have with you guys. Not every relationship is exactly the same. You feel me? Listen, that's okay. It's called having wisdom and discretion and discernment. It's okay to have different types of relationships. But the mentoring relationship specifically, it's going to be different than a lot of other relationships that you have. Let's look just real quick at a few examples of what of Paul and Timothy together. Paul writes of Timothy, I don't think these verses are going to be on the screen, I'm sorry, so maybe you can scratch them down. Uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 2, and verse 18. And then 2 Timothy 1, 2. In 1 Timothy 2, I'll read it for you real quick. It's just the very intro that I want you to see is that when Paul writes, actually just turn there with me, 1 Timothy, in the New Testament, the T's are all together, so if you find Timothy, Titus, or Thessalonians, they're all in the same kind of place. So go to 1 Timothy 2. All right, 1 Timothy chapter, uh, or verse 1, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace and mercy and peace from God our Father. What does Paul call Timothy? He says, my son, and then he prefaces it with, in the faith. I think I have a bullet on your handout that should say something like, Paul calls Timothy his son. Do you think that Paul and Timothy's relationship was different than the one that Paul had with, uh, let's just think of another guy, Peter or um, Silas? Maybe him and Silas were similar. They were together. It was different. He says in a few other places, uh, if you look, uh, scroll down to verse 18. It says, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. 
Again, Paul refers to Timothy as his son. And remember, he wrote this to Timothy, the whole letter, and then the second one. Paul cared deeply for this man. He didn't write to a whole lot of specific people. And so uh, turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, and we're going to talk about this, and then we'll move on to the next one, the next point. We're talking about the relationship that a mentor and a mentee have together. It's more, it's really, this context is more of a discipleship relationship. But I hope that our mentoring can be more discipleship focused. It's not the same thing as what we'll, you'll do as an adult. But it still needs to be similar and give you um, an, an investment of spiritual maturity. But that relationship, like we're talking about, should be different than others. Check it out, what Paul writes in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4 and verse 15. He says, For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. What Paul says in verse 15 is that you're going to have a lot of people they're going to get up and teach you. He says 10,000. That's a pretty large number. If you're faithful in your Christian life, it's possible that you'll have that many different people speak truth into your life. For example, I've listened to the radio and heard Ravi Zacharias and all kinds of other guys teach and preach, but I've never met that man. You guys know who that is? It's spelled like R-A-V-I. I encourage you. He's a really good apologist. You should go check him out. I've never met him. He can't call me son. We don't have a relationship. But he still instructed me in the word. I've still learned while he's taught. But he goes on to say that there's something else you can have, ye ha uh, yet have ye not many fathers. And so if you're going to have somebody in your life that's going to really invest in you and grow you, that's going to be unique. And I believe you can have more than one. He says not many. So I don't know how many that is, but it doesn't mean it has to be one. He mentions here specifically that he's begotten the Corinthians through the gospel, meaning he preached the gospel and they got saved, and that's how he became their spiritual father. But even so, you can have a spiritual father that hasn't led you to Christ. And ladies, uh, it, the Bible is gender specific in its pronouns, but this still applies to you. You can have somebody that serves in a fatherly-like role. We could say motherly-like role, perhaps. But someone that's older and wiser and will provide for you and give you direction and keep you accountable. So this is a snapshot at the relationship that you should have with a mentor. And your last bullet there in point two is, do you have a spiritual father? Just think about your life. Is there anybody in your life that you would say, yeah, man, I, I know I can go to that person. Maybe that's not me. That's, that's all right. I won't be offended if it's not me, by the way. If you want it to be me, I mean, I'll be your daddy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot, man, that's too much. All right. We got to censor that out. <laughs> Your youth pastor did not say, I'll be your daddy, okay? That didn't happen. <laughs> oh, man. Listen, if it's not me, I won't be offended. Maybe it's your small group leader. And listen, I'm hoping that our mentoring program takes off and we have more than small group leaders can handle. And I'm looking to recruit some other people who will be good to hang with students. And it's okay. You may not get to pick your mentor. It's about the relationship. It's about the investment more than it is about being friends. So let's look at our third point. Point three. Uh, eventually, the mentoring relationship transitions from mentor and mentee to peers. You guys see that? Are you still in 1 Corinthians 4? All right, remember what we just read about Paul saying you have a lot of instructors, but you don't have many fathers? Check out the very next verse. Look at verse 17. 
For this cause I have sent unto you who? Who? Say it again. I don't know that you're paying attention. Tell me. A few of you are listening today. Okay. He just said, you don't have a whole lot of fathers. And then he says, for this cause, I'm sending you Timotheus. Check out, what does he say? Who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ. So Timothy learned from Paul, Paul's ways. Paul says specifically, hey man, I got some ways about me. And this dude's picked up on that. And check it out. What's happening in verse 17? For this cause I have what unto you? Sent unto you. In Paul and Timothy's relationship, they did ministry together, traveling around, preaching, teaching, doing stuff. But eventually Paul says, all right, Timothy, it's your turn to go. And he sends this letter to the church at Corinth and says, by the way, this dude... He's with me. He says, he's my beloved son. Do you, do you have anyone in your life that will claim you like that? Besides your parents. I know your parents love you. Okay, they're great. Maybe, I, I hope they're great. But do you have somebody, like a small group leader or somebody in your life who will say, yeah, man, uh, you need someone to help over there? Oh, man, I'm going to send this person because I know they'll do great, man. We've been hanging out, and, and they've been doing really good. That's, that should eventually happen. Mentoring isn't just about you hanging out and being besties, okay? I mean, you can be friends, that's fine. But mentoring has a purpose. There's a goal, which we're going to see in just a moment. And eventually, if you meet the goals, you don't have to do it again. You're done. Ta-da! I mean, really, do you want to be mentored for the rest of your life? Do you want somebody to always have to be like, now listen, you're not doing that right, let's do it this way. Why don't you, you know, why don't you do a little more training, a little more practice? I want to be my own man someday, right? Or, or woman. You can be your own woman someday. <laughs> Mentoring has a purpose. And once we accomplish the purpose, the relationship continues, but it's just different. It's not the same. It's, it's disbanded in the sense that they're going, you're both going on to do different things, but the investment remains. The investment doesn't go away. Uh, and I have some extra verses for you that um, I don't have time to get to. So, that concludes our, what's supposed to be, 10-minute message, but it was like, yeah, I know you're looking at your, how many, how many minutes was it? Two minutes. All right, good. We have lots more time. All right. Did we plan a closing song tonight? I don't remember. All right, let's take a, uh, we'll take a vote when we're done. For which one? There were three, right? All right, let's talk about this, the, uh, Grounded Student Ministry Mentoring Overview. Now that you got all that Bible in your brains and Paul and Timothy, we can talk about how this thing works. And this will just be really brief. I'm going to pass one of these things out. You take that, pass it around. I have developed, with the Lord's wisdom, an application. You don't have to fill it out. This is just for an example for you tonight. And this is going to be the thing, or I might revise it a little bit. But a way that you can be mentored is to fill out the application. And please, no obligation, but anybody's welcome to, uh, to try. Or to, uh, how do I want to say this? To sign up. Thank you. I'm running out of my words, so I better be careful with my time. Well, if you didn't get one, then you can't be mentored. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, you can read through the text of it later, okay? Especially because I didn't, I didn't keep one, so I don't remember what it says. But I want you to know, and I think in the first little part there, it says that there's a goal, right? You guys see that? What does it say that's the goal of mentoring? All right, so if something has a goal, then that means we want to achieve something, right? So our mentoring, I mean, we'll hang. The relationship, as we're going to see, will start hanging. You need to start easy and just hang. But eventually, we're trying to get somewhere. 
And the goal is to invest spiritual maturity into another person, in our context, young people. So that's the goal. Once you reach the goal, you move on to the next person. That's how it works. How this uh, is specifically accomplished is through two phases. And uh, listen, this is just, it is what it is. It's real simple, and it lines up with our grounded vision. Yay. Strangely excited about that. Okay. Our grounded vision statement uh, is uh, we have love and grow as two of our core values. As a part of being in grounded, we want you to love each other and God and grow in his word. And so the two phases mirror that. Phase one. You ready? Say phase one. Phase one one is love. Say love. love. All right. In phase one, the relationship is focused on accomplishing two things. Your faithfulness and your virtue. And in phase one, I'm even giving, and mentors don't have a page yet. I have things to give to mentors. I'm giving them a, a minimum amount of times to meet before you can go to phase two. So in phase one, it's really dynamic. It's like, hey, me, let's say me and TJ hook up to start mentoring when we meet at Noble and Maine because it's the greatest coffee shop in Barstow County. And we go there and we hang out and we talk. All right, we meet once. There's no real agenda other than like, hey, man, let's get to know each other. Let's hang out. Where do you go to school? What's going on in your life? How's you know, you're getting anything out of the messages? That type of thing. As that progresses, we're going to be looking for those two characteristics to, to move you up to phase two. And those two things, like I already said, are faithfulness and virtue. Faithfulness means you're consistently doing what you're doing right now. So pat yourself on the back. You're earning credits toward faithfulness right now. But if you're going to be mentored, you've got to be present. We saw that with Paul and Timothy, and so we're going to ask you to be faithful. That's real easy. You just show up when you're supposed to. That's all you have to do. The other part is virtue. So in phase one, we're not asking a whole lot other than, hey, man, just be consistent and try to apply whatever you're hearing. We're not trying to fix your whole life, but virtue, that word also means integrity. Just try to start doing what you know is right. How about this for just a second? Think in your minds. Okay, all of you brains, we're almost done, okay? But take your brains right now. They're, I know they're mush after being at school, right? And think about, how many things do I know to do that are right? Do you think you'd be better if you just did that? So before we give you any more information, why don't we just try doing that? Does that make sense? Like, I already know I should love people. I know I should love God. I know I should stop doing this. All right, well, let's just... Let's just kind of work wherever we're at, man. Let's just take it as it goes. And, hey, maybe we'll talk to you about what you hear on Wednesday. You got the notes? You remember what we talked about? How's that working out? Have you, have you thought about that this week? And before we get into phase two, we want to make sure that you're faithful and that you're at least attempting to figure out where you're at spiritually and trying to grow. Does that make sense? Because phase two is important because phase two gets deep. Phase two, I have a booklet that we're calling Roots. And it's eight lessons, and I know you're just excited to do more schoolwork after school, right? But this is why we start simple with the love thing, and we roll into some Bible doctrine. And before we give you the good stuff, we want to make sure that you're already trying to figure out what you're supposed to be doing. You're faithful, and you're reading, and you're trying to follow God. Does that make sense? And then when you get into phase two, we're going to ask you, to grow, to remem- to memorize verses, so you need to have knowledge and service. We're going to ask you specifically to start serving somewhere if you don't already. Does that make sense? I think those things are on the paper. Are they on the paper? All right. So if you forget what I said, you can either watch it on YouTube, censor out short inappropriate thing, or you can read that paper and it'll tell you. You guys good with that? Okay. Let me see if I've got anything else. That's all I've got. Other than how to sign up, which is if you just look at the other side of, your, of that paper, and again, you don't have to fill this out. This is just an opportunity for you. There's some things asked of you. Just fill out the questions. One of them is a parent signature. I want your parents to know that you're going to be hanging out with somebody. Okay? 
in our prototype relationships, we didn't do this. And it was kind of like, oh, wait, we should have talked to mom and dad. And so we want to make sure that your parents know, and I'm eventually going to have a parent document that will tell them what we're going to be doing when we hang out, that type of thing. Does that make sense? So no, no pressure and no obligation. I just want you to know we got to put this thing out there because a lot of you guys have asked me, how does discipling, mentor, whatever, how does that work? And we're not going to call it discipleship. We're just going to call it mentoring. This is how it works. You sign up through a piece of paper. And we put you in a queue, and then we pair you up with somebody, and you start hanging out, and you go through those four goals. And then we check the box that you're a super awesome rock star, and that's it. Does that make sense? All right. Well, that's that. If you have any questions, come bug me. All right? We can talk. We can hang out. I just have to get my kid and come back in here after this, so I'm not trying to desert you. Um, let's pray. And then the worship team can come up and lead us in a surprise song. <laughs>